Hello and welcome to Lloyd's Dressing Gown Diary, the review of the second weekend of the Six Nations. Thank you for tuning in. Well, after we were served up an absolute treat for the first weekend, we were all expectant of what we might see for the second weekend. And unfortunately, it wasn't quite the same quality. It certainly had intensity and it certainly had physicality, but the quality of the rugby wasn't quite as good. So what do we see first up? Well, it all started in, uh, in Edinburgh. It started with Italy trying to achieve their second win on a, in a row for the first time in their history of the Six Nations. And unfortunately, they fell short. They were my tip for the weekend, and I was left really wanting on that one. So I'm sorry if anyone did lay big on Italy. So when Italy will review the... The, the video and go through the stats, they'll wonder how on earth did we lose when we had 70% possession? Well, what happened was that Scotland really took their chances. They really made the most of their opportunities. They scored tries every time they had their ball. The crucial moment in the game, though, really was with Italy breaking forward, Stuart Hogg left there on his own at the back, and he somehow intercepts it and skips away 85 yards under the posts uncontested. It was a great bit of skill by him, but Italy will reflect on the fact that they should have been 2010. Instead, they were 27 3, and the game was over. Scott Johnson will be very happy with what he's seen from Scotland. They've continued the form they showed late on at Twickenham. They were aggressive at the breakdown, they won balls, and crucially as well, they released their back three. Those of you that had the chance to watch my preview show, I do rate the back three. And Stuart Hogg really is pushing himself to be the Lions 15. So what happened next up? Well, next up, we were served up what can only be described as a poor game. I did say in my preview show that I was concerned about how France and Wales would go. And unfortunately, it came true. It was a weak game. Two poor teams trying not to lose, but hoping that they could sneak a win. In the end... France lacks the flair that we'd normally associate with them. They've got real problems at 10. Michelac is lost. France went through the phases but never really crossed the game line. Certainly Sean Edwards will be happy with how uh, France, France were, attack was covered with the Welsh defence. It was better from Wales as well. There are still questions for my mind over Phillips, over Cuthbert. Um, but Adam Jones had a difficult day at the office but, but came through in the end. And the two centres, well, they didn't have a, a, a tyre. They had a tiresome game, so I question whether their future really does lie together. But all in all, well, Wales, any win in, in Paris is a very, very good one. And they'll, they'll look forward to the, to the visit to Rome with much less trepidation than perhaps they would have had if they'd come away with a loss. So what to expect from France? Well, then, next up at Twickers, well, you know, England are now on, on, on the heavy push for a Grand Slam title. France is staring three defeats in the face. But, as you know, the French, sometimes they show up, sometimes they don't. It could be one of those days. They show up to Twickenham, score five tries. England looked lost, and we all look rather stupid. Or they could show up with a team that perhaps showed up against Italy. England steamroller them and move on to the Grand Slam. Really difficult to call, but we can discuss that in much greater detail later on in the preview show before Weekend 3. So what happened in Dublin? Well, it was atrocious conditions. The rain was driving, the wind was heavy, the referee had a poor game. Everything you expect Ireland to do, they really didn't. They struggled. He slipped dropping the ball three times, fumbles all over the place. They really couldn't get their game moving. It was a very, very tight game. I'm sure Kieran Healy will be cited for his stamping. I think... Farrell was lucky not to be sin-binned in the first, couple, uh, first 10 minutes when it was a clear foul, deliberate foul, pulling back the charge down, chase through. The crucial passage of play really was, though, after the sin-binning. This was a question of whether England had progressed as a team or whether Ireland were really going to force the pace of the game and go on and win it. Well, England came through comfortably in the end. 14 men at 6 all, the crowd singing, everyone thinking that Ireland are going to storm through to a victory. But England just took the sting out of the tail of the game for 5-10 minutes and were solid. They were solid in the pack and then they snuck two, two penalties for the win. Scotland will wonder how they lost their game. 
Ireland will wonder how they've lost this game. Unbelievable performance late on. Strong performances from Farrell. The Battle of the Tens never really took off with Sexton going off. And certainly the conditions didn't favour running rugby as both sets of midfield pairings at 12 and 13 really rarely saw the ball. In fact, Bar Barrett made a few impacts, but that was mainly on the defensive side. I've got great concerns as well about Ashton at the moment. The only breaks that were made in the game were down the left-hand side from the Irish left and the English right from Keith Earls. I really wonder where Ashton was at that point. But still, England will take great comfort from that victory. They'll walk away from Dublin knowing that they've, they've, they've had a tough fought game and it's all about the W at this stage in the Six Nations. They can look forward to France coming to Twickenham confident that they'll strike forward. Now, as we know, next weekend is not a Six Nations weekend. We will be doing a preview show of some of the big sporting fixtures that will take place, but we'll also include a Lions Watch section. So if any of you are out there have any questions, please do get in touch either through YouTube or on my Twitter account, at Lloydie Lewis, and you can let me know your questions and we'll do our best to answer them. But for now, this is the Dressing Gown Diaries closing out for the second weekend of the 2013 Six Nations Thanks very much. All the best.